Hey, what's up guys? Back again with another video in the C++ series. This time I'm going to teach you how to use arrays of structures. All right, so as you can tell, I probably sound a little different. My, um, I'm using the RTX audio thing, so it should block out all of my background noise, which is really nice because that's something I couldn't find out how to fix, but this is really cool. Um, apparently it uses artificial intelligence to remove uh, background noise and uh, you're supposed to use it for the RTX graphics cards, um, but there's like a workaround for it um, to use it with the GTX graphics cards, so that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, hopefully it sounds better. Let me know if it sounds bad or, or good. Let me know. But anyway, let's get started here. We're going to continue what we left off uh, la last episode. We learned how to work with structures last episode, how to make structures, how to access the members of structures, which are the variables that live inside structures. And in this episode, we're going to learn how to uh, make arrays that can hold structures. So in the past, we've made arrays many times. We've made arrays that can hold primitive values. And um, working with structures is pretty much no different. It's pretty much the exact same thing. But there's a few different you know nuances that you should know about. So let's just get some practice on how do we do it. Um, so first, let's actually define a structure for us to work with. So we'll just make a structure, and we'll call him Cheeto. So we're going to define what a Cheeto is, right? And let's think about what are the properties that a Cheeto has. Um, a Cheeto would have a weight. So a weight, and then a Cheeto, um, let's give it um, a name. <laughs> so our Cheetos can have names. And then uh, we'll do a length. So this will be like 1 through 10 or something like that. All right, so now that we have defined what a Cheeto is, we can go ahead and create different Cheetos, right? So just to um, you know have some more practice here, let's create a single Cheeto just so we can... Uh, um, remember how to do it if you forgot already. So Cheeto 1, so what we've done here is created a Cheeto of Cheeto 1, and we can even give it an initialization list if we want to. So it says double weight, string name, and integer length. So double weight, um, let's give it a weight of 0 0.7, or 0 0.07, and then a name, we'll call him Larry, so Larry the Cheeto, and then we'll give him a length of 6. So we have, we have created a Cheeto named Larry with a weight of 7, and, or 0 0.7 in a length of 6, okay? Easy peasy. But let's say we want to make multiple Cheetos and we want to group them together. That's what we would use an array for, right? So let's um, do that. So to make an array, usually, first you define the data type of the array, so Cheeto in this case, and then you give the array a name. So we'll call this a chip bag. That's a fitting name, right? And then you need to have the uh, the brackets here, which are how you know it's an array, right? That's That's how you denote it as an array. So if you go ahead and put a semicolon here, you're going to get an error because you haven't uh, given it a uh, size. So if we put four, the error goes away, obviously. So now the, we have created a chip bag um, array of Cheetos that is pretty much just empty. So it's got empty Cheetos inside of it. So um, that's how we create an array of Cheetos. Easy peasy. But let's say we want to give our chip bag some actual values. So um, we have three Cheetos in this chip bag, so it's an array of Cheetos, array of structures. Let's say we want to change the second Cheeto in the chip bag. Let's say we wanted to give it some values, okay? So that would be the, um, if it's zero based, it'd be zero, one, two. So that would be the first index. So to access the first index of our chip bag, we would do chip bag one, and then dot, and then you just provide the member that you want to change. So let's change the weight first. So uh, chip bag, uh, Cheeto number two is going to be a weight of 60, so like 60 grams or whatever. And then if we want to change the length, the name, we can do that too. It doesn't actually matter what order you change it in, by the way. You can do it however you want to. So we'll give our Cheeto a name. We'll call him uh, Bartholomew. Bartholomew. So we got Bartholomew the Cheeto. And let's give him a length. So... We'll give him a length of six. Um, yeah, so anyway, so now we have created a, uh, just to recap here, we have created a um, array of Cheetos. So we have three Cheetos in our array, and we set the second Cheeto to have these values here for each member. So the weight of 60, name of Bartholomew, and the length of six. The other two values, number one and number three, are going to still be like empty. They're not actually empty because, of course, um, as I explained last episode, they're going to have uh, garbage values assigned to them by default, except for the except for the string because the string is automatically just going to be empty string, like I showed you. Um, but yeah, that's how you do that. That's how you set one of the values of our chip bag. And there's actually an easier way you can do it, do that. So let's say we want to set the third Cheeto in our chip bag. 
uh, we could do this all on one line. So chip two, chip bag two, and then we can give it the values inside of the curly brackets like we just did with the initialization list a second ago. So let's say we want to give them some values. So we'll say 40, uh, two, and then Jer. So Jer the Cheeto, okay? So we have assigned the third Cheeto in our chip bag to those values. We have given it those values, okay? Oh, I put the order wrong, that's why. So the order is weight, name, and length. I put mine as weight, length, and name. So I'll just change this to this. And now it's able to recognize it. So that's what the problem was. There we go, so that's much better now. So that's how we're, that's another way we can assign our chips, or our Cheetos to have a, a values, right? So instead of having to do it all in three lines, we could have it all in one line, which is much more concise. So with our previous arrays, like with primitive data types, so let's make, um, a scores array here, so an array of integers, and we're gonna give it some, um, and we're gonna give it an initialization list, and we're gonna say 45, 23, and 100. So in our previous arrays, like we just did a second ago right here, we're able to give it an initialization list all in one go, so that as you create it, they're all gonna have values from the get-go, right? We can do the same thing for our Cheeto array, for structures arrays. So we could do uh, Cheeto, so we're defining a new array of, we'll call it my friends, because I have Cheeto friends, apparently, and uh, we can give it an initialization list. So we'll just open it up like this, and then we can give it each thing. So we need to give it a amount, right? So let's say we have four Cheeto friends. So for each one, we can give it a initialization list. So um, 4.0, uh, Eminem, and four. So that's a single Cheeto, so then comma, new line, and then we can put the second Cheeto. I don't think you actually have to put it on a second line, but it's easier to look at if you have it on, on a second line, you know what I mean? It's easier for the programmer and for other programmers that might look at your code, so do it like this, it's, it makes it look really nice, okay? So we'll add some more stuff, so just put some names here. Uh, three, comma, uh, 120, um, Seven, and then the last one here, um, 34.09 and I. Okay, and for the last one, you don't need a comma because it's the last one. There's You only need a comma when it's the when there's another one coming after it, basically, right? And again, I messed up the order, so let me just fix that. There we go, so that's fixed now. And the errors went away. So now we just put a semicolon on the end of that initialization list, okay? So this is our initialization list. We have created a array of four Cheetos and they all have initial values. And if you want to, you don't actually have to define all four. You can leave out the last one if you want to. It doesn't really matter how you do it. Um, but yeah, that's how you do that. Pretty cool, right? It's much more concise, as you can see. And that's pretty much it for defining arrays. Um, again, just to access them, all you gotta do is provide the index like you would do with a regular array. And then after that, do the dot operator and then provide the name of the member that you want to access, okay? I can't get this freaking error to go away. I don't know why that's red for some reason, but um, by the way, also, if you're gonna provide an initialization list, of course, this is, a, this is an explicit list, so it's able to basically um, get the number. So it's, it's an implied size, right? So it's gonna use the size of however many elements you provide to choose the size. So in these cases, of course, like I did here, you don't have to say three. It's able to recognize that you put three values and just put three as the size. Same thing for this, okay? But um, if you don't want, it, but let's say you leave one out. Um, if you don't want to have four, you want to have three. And then later on you want to add, to the, add the fourth one, then then you would want to add, put four inside of here because you want to have that extra um, item, you know, still empty, like, you know, for the future, okay? Anyway, hopefully that made a little bit of sense. Um, the last thing I'm gonna do is just show you one more example of how we can, you know, access these. We can just print all, we can just print out all of our Cheetos right here. So we'll just make a simple for loop for that. So first we'll say, um, let's see here. All my Cheeto friends, and then we'll do a for loop here. So for int, i is equal to, sorry, I can't type. Oh my gosh. Int i is equal to zero, i is less than four, because the four is the size of our Cheetos array. And then i plus plus. And then for each one, we want to do the name. Wait, no, what's the first one? The weight, right? So the weight, the name, and the length. So the weight. So then we'll say my friends, friends, 
uh, i for the index dot weight, just like that. So we're just access accessing the um, array like we would normally do, and then putting the dot operator, and then like I said, the member that you want to access. Okay, and we can do that for all of these. So name and then length. Cool, so now we'll do length and name, cool. Anyway, so that should work, let's run this. I'm not sure why this error is here, like I said, so we'll see what happens. Um, I'm missing some something somewhere, I'm sure. Maybe not, it's letting me run it, it looks like. There we go, so yeah, it says all my Cheeto friends, 4, m and 4, 70, Kin Kniff 3, 120, Billy Bob 7, and Weight 34, Ike 9. I know that's a little small, but it works, so that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's how you do it. That's how you access each of the elements of the Cheeto array, okay? So that's pretty simple. That's all we're going to do for this episode. I showed you how to make an array of structures. You can use, you can use Cheetos. You can use any, any structure that you would ever create. You can use that inside of an array. So pretty cool, okay? Um, keep in mind, all of the code for today's episode is going to be in the description below, so check out the link for that. You can bookmark that for future use in case you want to come back to it if you forget uh, how this works or you just want to review how this works, okay? And then also, you can join our Discord server. We have a big community. You can join our server, get some friends, ask for help if you ever need help. Um, we're growing our C++ community. We have a big Java community, but we need some C++ guys, so feel free to join so we can have a crusade against each other. Anyway, um, one final thing I want to tell you about is we have a way for you to support this channel if you want to. There's a join button below this video next to the subscribe button. You can join this channel for as low as 99 cents a month, and you can uh, cancel at any time if you want to. And you get some cool perks, like um, you get a cool Discord rank, you get um, shout outs and videos like you see on the screen right now. You also get early access to all my videos. So if you want to see the, these kind of videos that you like to watch, if you like these videos, if you want to see them ahead of other people, then go ahead and join the channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month. All right. So that will help me out. Keep me clothed and fed. And, uh, yeah, so, so that's about it. So if you like this video, leave a like, if you want to see more subscribe and 